Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Greetings in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords, who has made it possible once again for us to be here on Bless TV, Bless Radio. We thank God for everything. Every day, every night, we need to give him praise, we need to give him thanks, we need to glorify his name, we need to exalt him, we need to appreciate what he, he is doing in our lives. And this is what every believer, every Christian must do, giving God all the glory in all things, in all things, whether you're going through challenges, whether you're going through um, situations, in all things, the Bible says we need to give him thanks. And this is what we are doing. That is the reason for our being on earth. To praise the Lord, to worship him, to speak his word, to let people know of his goodness. Hallelujah. So this evening, we thank God for life. We thank God for strength. We thank God for all that he has done for us and he is still doing. When we give him praise, when we give him honor, when we glorify his name, when we thank him for what he is doing in our lives, he will do more for us. One day we'll talk about pampering God. You can pamper God. We pamper God to do more things. He said, let, let, <laughs> he created as in his own image. So if man or men need pampering at times, God also needs pampering. So one day we'll talk about how to pamper God. Praise the Lord. So somebody will ask why, how can you pamper God? You pamper him. And David pampered God, and God was so happy to come down to destroy his enemies. So we can pamper God. Hallelujah. Tonight we are here once again to continue with our Bible studies. We began last week um, on the topic of spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. And now uh, Evangelist Adama came to continue. And uh, I'll continue from where she left. And there was a scripture she was using. I will continue from there by the grace of God. And then We'll take it further. Now, before I go on, uh, I'll pray um, before we start the teachings. Hallelujah. Father God, we just want to thank you once again. We glorify your holy name. We magnify you. We exalt your holy name. We thank you for everything that you are doing for us. This hour, Lord, we plead the blood of Jesus upon our lives. Let the blood, O oh Lord, Wash us and cleanse us, let the blood speak for us. In the mighty name of Jesus, I commit every listener, every everyone viewing, all the viewers, Lord, in your hands at this moment, I pray that your spirit will be with them, your blood will be with them, your blood will wash and cleanse them, your blood will empower them in the mighty name of Jesus. I thank you and I glorify the spirit of the living God, I pray in the name of Jesus that you come and take over, take over this teaching so that we will live here blessed with your word. In Jesus' mighty name, I pray with thanksgiving. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. But before I continue, I'll also take this opportunity to greet my special viewers and listeners, Evangelist Adama, Mama Guy, and um, Mr. Joe, Mr. King. And all those who, uh, Fatu, everyone, may the Lord bless you. And I would like to say a big thank you to Mama Agi all the way in Italy for uh, wishing me and Evangelist Adama uh, Valentine's Day. Unfortunately, we were not listening, but I have heard. <laughs> so God richly bless you. Uh, we also wish you a belated Valentine's Day. 
God bless you so much for your love, your care, and everything. May the Lord continue to empower you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Hallelujah. So today, we're going to continue with our Bible studies. And we will continue on this topic of spiritual maturity. Spiritual maturity. If anyone has any contributions, you can um, text the studio line, which is 07478, sorry, 07477836486. Or you can text me directly on 07412026017. You need to contribute or you need to say something else, any questions at all, uh, you are welcome. And uh, I'd like to also say, uh, welcome back, Evangelist Apia from um, Ghana. I hope you we will see you soon. In Jesus' name, amen. Hallelujah. And people are loving this great. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So this topic is very very important in our lives this spiritual maturity um, we need it so much in our lives as believers without being spiritual first of all everything begins from a, a scratch like a baby is born last week I was talking on a baby born today drinks milk but as if we want the baby to grow, then the baby must, as drinking milk, it goes on to be taking a bit of uh, harder or something more thicker than milk for the baby to be growing, be growing as a, a, a being. Right. So when we come into the Christian uh, life or spirit, our spiritual lives, some have become so much babies and they are still babies from the day that they became born again up to now. The little thing that happens becomes a, a big issue. Well, there are certain things that happen in our lives that sometimes we need to brush them off. Because the mind is growing, the, the thinking, our thoughts are becoming different from what we were thinking so many years back. There are so many things when I think of uh, the past, I did those things. Whilst I was still a Christian or um, I was born in a Christian home, I said I was a Christian and I'm a Christian. The things that I was doing in the past, when I think about those times and this time, I see a big difference. Because why? Those things, as at the time, the mind was shallow. The mind was a baby mind. It, it was a baby Christian mind. I was thinking like a baby. I was acting like a baby. I was doing things like a baby. I was... <laughs> Being, I was treating myself like a baby. There are a lot of Christians who are treating them. In fact, they are seeing themselves as baby, baby. Hallelujah. But it is very important for every believer to grow from the milk stage to where you can eat bones or chew bones. There are some bones when you chew. <laughs> you swallow them. There are certain bones when I chew, I swallow them. I don't put them down for any dog to come and take. I swallow to give me more strength, more power. Well, uh, according to knowledge, bones have calcium and other stuff. And when you, you chew or you swallow them, it gives you more strength. Some of you, you go to KFC, that's why I don't like eating outside. So you leave all the bones there, the proper ones and this thing. When you are chewing the bones, people are watching you. And he said, and this a black man, real black man, chewing bones. So for, for me to avoid those things, I take them home and go and chew it. 
and now and there's nobody there to see me. You know, when it comes to the spiritual life, you see, these things are very serious. You might be thinking, what am I saying? But I, when we take everything from the natural into the spiritual, that is why the, the devil fears certain people. The devil said, Paul, I know. Jesus, I know. Who are you? They are chewing bones. You are drinking milk and you are coming to cast me out. It is not possible. It can't work. But when we chew the bones, when we are <laughs> equipped with the word of God, child of God, the word of God is... <laughs> It starts from the milk level and it goes right to the bone level. I know last week I was saying that that prayer, this prayer that will be done on earth as it is in heaven, is those that prayer is for babies. We have prayed that prayer and we have gone past that prayer of let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Although Jesus taught the disciples, why did he teach them the primary level of prayer? Because they were infants. They were babies. The disciples were babies. That was the reason why when the child was brought to them to cast out the demons from them, they couldn't because they had that baby mind. They, had, they were drinking milk. Jesus was feeding them with milk so that they can grow from milk level. Jesus didn't tell them that when you are praying, start growing tongues. Shagatakata. How would they understand anyway? Now, what is this man telling us to grow tongues? In fact, Jesus in his ministry, I don't know, unless maybe somebody tells me, but the tongue speaking, Paul understood the tongue speaking, and he began to teach about the uh, diversities of tongues. How you or a believer must use the tongues. So, so many people feel that, uh, I mean, I've heard renowned, uh, big, big, strong pastors and uh, ministers saying that tongues is not necessary for a believer. It is a joke. Tongues is very, very important for every believer. But if you haven't reached the bone level, you might be thinking that the tongues is not important. There are certain uh, spiritual battles that you need tongues. I had, I've said this but I don't know whether uh, it was recorded at us at the time or you were listening as at the time, but I was saying I had an encounter with a lady possessed with demons. She told me she was sent to come and destroy me, destroy my life. She told me clearly, he said, I was sent. I've destroyed a lot of persons. It is your turn. But the, the battle was very strong. God won the battle. As I was, I, I prayed my, my, my intestines, spiritual intestines. I could tell because where I was, as at the time, it was like life and death. Either I win the battle or she wins the battle. And <laughs> it will not be possible for a child, in fact, it is, it is not good for a child of God to lose a battle. I always say it, and I will continue to say that since I became a believer or a child of God chewing um, bones, I have not lost any battle. And I will never lose any battle in the name of Jesus. Because I inquire from the Lord, one, and two, I do according to what God tells me. So, child, child of God, before you can win a battle, you must be connected 
get connected to God, read the scriptures, chew the scriptures. You know, sometimes um, in Africa, we say that um, we say that when you are going to write exams, we have our books, economics books or uh, geography books and whatever. Chew, Baba, that's what we say. You chew it to put your legs in water the whole night and you are reading, you are, you are chewing the words one by one so that when the questions come, and as you chew, you don't go and tear the Bible and start chewing. We put it in our minds so that when the questions come, straight away you know how to answer. So that is the same thing in the spiritual realm that we, we study the word of God. We study the word of God that when the devil comes in any way, we can use the word of God to counter him. Jesus used the word of God, his word. He is the word anyway. When the devil came to tempt him to say all kinds of words, if you are the son of God, if you are the son of God, some of us, the devil has come to say so many things. If you are a child of God, do this, then we will do it. Without wisdom. You see, spiritual maturity is also wisdom. How to apply wisdom. How to use wisdom. How to understand the things or the issues of life. Hallelujah. So if we do not <laughs> um, practice these things. We do not do these things. We do not understand why we are believers. We will always be thinking like babies. Drinking milk, latogen, serilac, um, all those liquid things. Hallelujah. But when we are Chewing the word of God, studying the word of the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God. When, when the Bible says approved, in, in our natural world, when you go and buy uh, something and they stamp it approved, it means it's good. There's nothing wrong, approved. They, they put a stamp on it. So the Bible says, study to show thyself approved unto God, a workman who needed not to be ashamed, but rightly dividing the word of truth. Steady to show thyself approved unto God. When God approves you, God stamps, he puts a stamp on you, like he did to Job. Because Job was showing uh, um, this thing. Job chapter 3, 4, 5, when you read, he was chewing bones. He, why, why would God give the devil permission to go and tempt Job? Because he knew, he has approved him that this is my son. No matter what you do to him, he has chewed my word. He has the word inside him. Some of us, God will not permit the devil to. In fact, he has not even permitted the devil. We are already falling. How much more if he has permitted the devil? Are we in that position for God to say that, have you considered my son? Something, put your name there. Have you, I won't mention the name that uh, in case you are watching, say, oh, but Moses knows me, he knows my story, so he has given my, your name to Then it becomes an issue. So whoever you are watching, put your name there. Has, can God sit down, analyze your life? We analyze ourselves. Can God say that, have we considered, have you considered my son or my daughter, uh, uh, so, so, and so? Are we in that level for God to say that, go and consider, uh, take everything from this man. Some of us, just one thing they took from us, 
we have backslided. We are just one thing, maybe one simple thing that God uh, tried you. You have backslided. You are living in the world because of one thing. How much more if your own house gets burned? Job was receiving it continuously. One servant will come. Let with a space, within a space of fifteen minutes, another servant came. All your cars have been uh, this thing. All your cars. So if you even have pointer, car pointer, then you say, where was God? Eh? God, I prayed in the morning that you protect my car. Yes. God, there are so many things happen in life that we must grow spiritually. I'm going to read this scripture in the book of Hebrews. I'll come back to the old scripture we used last week. But Hebrews chapter 6. Hallelujah. Hebrews chapter 6. I read from 1. Whew, hallelujah. Praise the Lord. I believe you are being blessed. If no one has any contribution, please contribute. Therefore, we must progress beyond the elementary. This was the, this was the first scripture I read last week. But we want to go and then bring more um, light, throw more light onto it. Before I bring the new one, it says, Therefore, we must progress beyond the elementary instructions about Christ and move on to maturity. Praise the Lord. Move on to maturity. Not laying this foundation again, repentance from dead works and faith in God. Teaching about baptisms, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, and eternal judgment. You see, Jesus taught the disciples. The disciples, he said, go and make and disciples of all nations. Therefore, when we make disciples of all nations, we leave the elementary. That is what we taught the unbelievers to receive Christ as their Lord and personal Savior. We transfer that teaching to those who are now born again, we move on to maturity. How do we move on to maturity? By teaching higher things. How to overcome this. How to overcome that. But these elementary thoughts, the teachings of uh, being born again, laying on of hands, and uh, repentance, we have taught them we leave them for the infants, the babies, those who have now been born again. They are being uh, equipped by the word of God, teaching them to observe and do the will of God. Those things must be taught to them and then we move on to maturity. A born again Christian will not Maybe you have the spirit of discernment, but you don't even know. But when you are a born again Christian, or you are a child of God, you have been born again, you have given your life to Jesus from 2001, and you are still drinking milk, always thinking of uh, baby things, always, oh, uh, I can't overcome this. I can't overcome that. Paul, Jesus Christ, Paul, as soon as he left the old life, he never came back to it again. Although people were criticizing him, people were saying all sorts of things to him, that, <laughs> look, this is the murderer. The murderer. He was persecuting um, the, 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 the people of God. 
doing all sorts of things. Hallelujah. But he never came back to do those things any longer. He was always moving forward, teaching, studying. The Bible says he was a man who was studying. He can study. He can study to the point he, he, in Philippians uh, 3 uh, 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 17, he says, Be imitators of me, brothers and sisters, and watch carefully those who are living this way. Just as you have, um, just as you have us as an example, for many live about whom I have often told you, and now with tears I tell you that they are the enemies of the cross of Christ. Some of us we are living the the life of being <laughs> children in the kingdom. Being everything is a problem. That thought, mind of even growing in the Lord, living certain things in the past, they, we can't do it. We are being held back. So last week I was saying that the, we, we can practice certain things for so many years that we will not even know that there are strongholds in our lives. There are certain things that are strongholds in our lives. We don't know. Or it is an ancestral thing. It, it, from my father to my from my grandfather to my father to his brother to his uh, sister, it is my turn. I have to, and still we call ourselves Christians. Oh, we all go through certain things. Yes, we go through certain things, but the Bible says we need to move on to maturity. We must move on to maturity. Leave the past. Leave those things that were <laughs> holding us. Those things that kept or has kept us bondage in life. So it says, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrines of baptisms and of laying on of hands, and of resurrection of the dead, and the eternal judgment. And this will we do if God permit. For it is impossible for those who were once enlightened, or enlightened, and have tasted of the heavenly gifts, and were made partakers of the Holy Ghost, and have tasted the good word of God, and the powers of the worlds to come, or the world of the world to come, if they shall fall away, to renew them again unto repentance, see they crucify to themselves the Son of God afresh, and put him to an open shame. So if we go back to be drinking milk, then we are crucifying Jesus again. There are certain things that must die in our lives. There are certain things that must be cleared out of our conscience. There are certain, you see, I always talk about this spirit, but it is very serious that a Christian can keep in their heart unforgiving spirits. Unforgiving spirits. It is a dangerous spirit. Hatred. Gossiping. Backbiting. The, 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 there are categories of sin. There are levels of sin. I always say it that people say, all sin is sin. Yes, 
All sin is sin, but there are certain sins that are greater than the others. So, when we are committing a particular sin, we read in the book of Romans 5, when we are living a particular sin, and we think that, oh, when somebody goes to, <laughs> you just watch the papers, news. Hey, have you heard that pastor? He has committed adultery. Have you heard that pastor? Yes. If you come on the news, they will, they will uh, telecast it, publish it, disgrace that pastor and this. But there are a lot of men of God defrauding people. Why don't they put them on the news? There are a lot of men, women of God uh, uh, stealing people's uh, uh, things. Lying, a lying tongue is, is very dangerous. To lie or to bear false witness. All these things are dangerous things that we take them lightly. Because the Bible has said that he that committed adultery yeah, sins against his body. Don't you know the body is the temple of God? This is, okay, right. It is up to God. It's, your body is the temple of God. Yes, so the Bible says he who he who destroys the temple of God, him shall God destroy. So it is up to us destroying the temple of God and God destroying the temple or destroying the, the, the thing. But let's go beyond this that now you are sinning against God and man. A Christian can receive, take bribe and go and stand in the dock or whatever and and, and testify, give false witness against somebody because he has been giving thousand pounds or uh, five thousand pounds, some kind of money to to go and speak evil concerning uh, his his neighbor or her neighbor, and we take those things lightly, and we think we are uh, um, Christians, we are still baby Christians. The Bible says we have crucified. The Lord Jesus Christ again. So there are certain things that are holding us as believers. Every person, every child of God, I always say this, has his or her shortcoming, but we pray to God. We pray to God that uh, we overcome those things. That time I was saying that if anyone thought that they had anger, that spirit of anger, more than I do, <laughs> that person then, he might be killing people. <laughs> because that anger, that spirit that was on me, the spirit of anger, I don't take nonsense. I, I can't stand it. I, I, but as time went on, or as time goes on, I realized reading scriptures to overcome it. I don't, I'm not saying that I don't have anger. The Bible says that uh, be angry, but do not sin. So uh, God himself gets angry. If I say I don't, have, so I don't get angry, then I'll be a liar. I get angry, but in my anger, I do not have to sin. That's what the Bible has said. When the Bible says anger lies in the bosom of fools, it is those who practice it, those, the little thing they are angry. The, the little thing act. The little thing. They can't control their anger. A lot of people cannot control their anger. So, and anger is one of the uh, dangerous spirits from the devil that can disgrace a man, a believer. Anger, spirit of anger. It can disgrace you. And <laughs> because you take time to listen. As soon as you hear first two statements, then you get angry. You haven't heard the, the last bit. Eh? So it is very important for every believer. It is very, very necessary that whatever spirit that you see yourself or, or being controlled by that spirit. 
spirit of jealousy. You must grow from it. You must grow from it. Sometimes I, I, I don't, I, I can't remember the last time I got that, that's anger that came, that comes before. I can't remember the last time I, I, that anger came on me. Because I had, had to control it, had to find ways and pray and leave it because it was disgracing me. The anger was disgracing me. So I had to pray, I had to control it. So now if anyone, I'm getting angry, I smile. That is why now I smile. So, but when I'm smiling, it doesn't mean I'm getting angry. But I use that as a weapon against my anger. And through prayer, God helped me and took that foolish anger for me. Now it's righteous anger that is in me. If anybody is destroying the temple of God, that anger of God, Jesus, going to whip the, the disciples, that's, that's the anger I have. So if anyone speaks against God, or a child of God, or any uh, anything uh, concerning God, that one, you will see my anger. Uh, it is God's anger. When God says, He's a jealous God. Yes, he's a jealous God. He's a jealous God because he doesn't want anyone to uh, um, uh, worship any other God apart from him. So if God is jealous, and we have that kind of jealousy, righteous jealousy, like somebody, I mean, when a man, a married man, you won't be happy seeing somebody kissing your wife. Or they're doing this thing. You have to be jealous. Or somebody sitting with your wife and smiling. Those we, you see, one day we'll talk about all this because there are so many people when they are not matured in spirit, every natural thing bothers their mind because they can't discern to know. There's no spirit of discernment. I always say this. Uh, they, uh, this Spirit of discernment is very important. When you are a child of God, you can't discern. Somebody sitting in front of you, talking, and you can't discern between the wrong and the right. You are in trouble. You are, you are in a big trouble. Very big trouble. Because anything you hear, you, could, you take it to the natural and answer. Beep, 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 pam, then answer. That's the answer. So many Christians are answering unnecessary questions. So many Christians, men of God, women of God, pastors, reverend ministers, apostles, because that spirit of discernment is not in them. They don't have it. So, oh, have you heard? Yes. What have I heard? What do you want to tell me? Oh, you haven't heard. Even the way the person will talk, you have the spirit of discernment, you know that from, have you heard? What have I he or she is going to say his lies. So sometimes I'll be, I'll be, some, some people will be talking to me, I'll, I'll be listening, i listen. And they expect me to contribute or expect me to be upset, and I'm not upset, they don't understand. Because I know you are lying. I'm only entertaining you for a while to bring all the lies out, and then I'll correct you with the word of God. Hallelujah. There are certain people you correct them, so there are certain people you chastise them. That is what men and women of God, we must, we must use our brains to know the wisdom that uh, God has given us. You know, the Bible says uh, the, the word of God is for uh, reproof. It's not everyone you reproof. There are certain people, they understand. When you reprove them, they understand. There are certain people you have to correct them. The baby Christians, you correct them. And they the matured ones, you prove them, you chastise. That's why the Bible says God chastises those he loves, those he knows that they can keep his uh, uh, chastisement. He, he will deal with them. When God is punishing me, I know. God punishes me. Sometimes God will be punishing me, I know. That he's punishing me. I don't ask uh, why Things are going wrong in my life. I know what I have done. Why God is doing that to me? So I go and repent. That is getting uh, maturity. Get, knowing you can discern. 
I don't blame the devil for everything. And I do something. I I know I'm connected to God. I'm not connected to the devil. The devil is fighting me. Doesn't mean he can overcome me. The devil is fighting you. Doesn't mean he can overcome you. You only allow him to overcome you when you give him the space. So if anything happens to me, I take my life with God. Not the devil. Because I am not Job. My name is not Job. For God to say that I'm, going, I'm giving you my son David. Go and try him. No. He said, keep fighting him. You will fight you and you will win in, in my name. That's what God will tell. He's been telling Satan. And Satan knows me. He knows my name very well. That woman that uh, he said on the computer. Eh, Brother Moses. He said on the computer. In the spiritual realm. They have all the names. That's what she told me. Mm -hmm. All the names of the pastors mm -hmm. listed, and they go and they tell them, Go to this one, go to this one, go to that one. So, my name was on her list mm -hmm. to come and destroy me. She was telling me after finishing with her, and now she was sitting, I was sitting, and I was interviewing her, <laughs> interviewing the devil. I wanted to do, I was, she was there, she was calling my spirit into a bottle. And then she can come and destroy me. And the fire of the Holy Ghost splashed on her face. And she said, leave my home, leave my home. I said, no, I'm here to bless the food, bless, bless the food. And now the battle began. Hallelujah. So every Christian, there's a battle, but you will not lose in Jesus' name. You've got to equip yourself in the Lord. You've got to build yourself in the Lord. You've got to make sure that every time you are connected to God, that's why when I'm always praying and I ask God for forgiveness, <laughs> people don't understand. David said, hey, watch me. And uh, if I have hidden any iniquity in my heart, cleanse me. Because he knows the battles ahead of him. And he knows he can't win the battles when there's a, a beauty thought in his heart. When he's, he's not standing right with God, he will lose his battle. And so I pray that there are certain people, who, men, women of God, children, they never pray for me. What have I done? What have I done? And they go and lose. I pray, whether I've done or haven't done. That's why that prayer, I say, forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. In the same scripture that I said, let thy will be done on earth. That's it. Say, forgive us our trespasses. It is a daily thing. A daily thing that we forgive those who have offended us so that God will also forgive us. If we don't forgive uh, those who trespass against us, how will God forgive us? God will not forgive us. So we need to forgive. Then God will forgive us. But there are certain people, they are fighting, they are uh, the enemies of progress. You don't forgive enemies of progress. You fight against that spirit of fighting your progress. You don't for forgive those who fight your progress. You only fight those who are fighting your progress. But you forgive those who are those who are just sinning. You know, they they are jealous of you. They are, they don't know why they are even jealous of you. Maybe because of your Adidas you are wearing. <laughs> Hallelujah. That's the Adidas you are wearing. They see it. They say, ah, I know Adidas is very expensive. <laughs> I was working uh, I, was this, I was working at uh, Graham Park. I've done so many jobs in this country. I was working at Graham Park. I was cleaning. And then one man saw me and he said, I like the way you clean. You're very neat. I have some Adidas up and down, new one I bought from America. I haven't worn before. Do you like it? I said, I like it. And he gave me those Adidas with trainers, everything. <laughs> Could you believe? Eh? A man of God saw it. He said, no, 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 no. I'm not sure somebody, anyone can give you that thing. I said, why? 
It's very expensive. Then I need see look at in the flesh. You know, in the flesh. So so people can they call themselves Christians, men and women of God. They can be jealous of even your trainers. Yeah, he is your pastor. Your own pastor can be jealous. How can a pastor be a shepherd? Be jealous of what the sheep is learning. Come on. How come? It is a wrong spirit. Devilish. It's devilish for a shepherd to be jealous of a member. You, If we know, take ourselves as shepherds, as Christ. When God says, I'll supply all your needs according to my riches in glory. <laughs> by Christ Jesus. He wants his children to look good. He wants his children, and you a shepherd, you take the, the mantle as a shepherd of Christ, shepherding a sheep. And they dress nicely, they wear nice things, and you are jealous. You want to wear, collect. Oh, God forgive us. It is immaturity. You are living in the flesh. Total fleshy things. You live in the flesh. I have a message from Mama Agi all the way from Italy. I love this woman. <laughs> Praise the Lord. I love you. As you are saying, we, if we accept Christ as our personal Savior, we need to read the Bible constantly so that we can grow in the Lord. For instance, if you have a newborn baby and that baby does not grow, it will be very disturbing. So we need not to be stagnant in our walk with the Lord. Amen. God bless you. That is, we are fitted on this name. When a baby is not growing, God bless you, Mama. If a baby is not growing, <laughs> You'll be thinking, ah, what should I do? What's happening? What, what, <laughs> what food should I uh, give the baby? Because you are feeding the baby with milk. The baby is 40 years, or the man is grown to 10 years, 15 years, and is still drinking lactose. Oh, stop it, stop it. There's a time to tell a child, oh, stop it, stop it. Take it easy, don't... And there's a time you say, hey, stop it, don't do it. The, the tone is the same thing, but it must change. Now it becomes cautioning. Before it was pampering, no, don't do that, it's not good. It's pampering, you are teaching, you are showing. But a time comes, it must be instruction. Stop it, don't do it. Then the baby is growing, he's living that baby life. To and now be somebody who knows that if I do this, this is what is going to happen to me. Hallelujah. My time is almost up. I'm going to read the last scripture in the book of Hebrews 5. Hebrews chapter 5. Although I, I see myself not to finish, but uh, if, if not, Evangelist, she's a very powerful woman of God. Um, she'll come and continue tomorrow, or she will bring her own topic. Uh, by the grace of God, Thursdays are mine. Wednesdays, Thursdays, they are mine. So if she she is coming out, tell her what to come and say. Fridays is hers, so she can do what she wants to do. But on on Thursday, they are still mine. Thursdays. I'll teach you what to say. So Hebrews 5, 12 to 14. Well, Brother Moses, you read it or you read it. It doesn't matter. I'm sorry. 12 to... For do... Oh, let me read the King, King James Version. Hebrews 5, 12. For when? For the time ye ought to be teachers... Ye have need that one teach you again. Let me break it down. Let me read the simplified version so that we understand. On this, uh, for though you should, in fact, 
be teachers by this time. You need someone to teach you the beginning elements of God's utterances. You have you have gone back to needing milk, not solid food. In the King James Version, for when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God, and are become such as have need of milk and not strong meat. This Hebrews, Paul was saying that the time has come for you to be teachers. Instead of we being teachers, teaching the right things, teaching things from above, being filled with the Holy Spirit to teach, we are still being taught. Why? Because we are still drinking the milk. Hmm. This scripture is very powerful. For when you, the time you ought to be teachers, so many people listening and watching now, they ought to be teachers instead of being taught. Because you have been born again for so many years. You have been in the church so many years and you can't even if the, if the pastor says uh, pray, you can't pray. Just prayer. You can't pray. I've, I've, I've been in a, a, a place where I ask somebody to pray. The pastor has been in is so I'm shy. Shy to pray? And you call yourself a believer? You call yourself a Christian? That you need to be teaching others? You are being taught. If you are in a church, even more than a year, and you, you are not doing anything, watch your Christian life. Watch it. Watch it. You are just in a church. All that you need to do is sit down, listen, go home. You don't pray. You don't do anything. You are not in any group. You are not doing anything. Unless you are not giving the chance. You, you wanted to do it then, you are not given a chance. But if you are sitting hiding from taking something upon yourself, you have to be watching. Hallelujah. I'll come and continue this scripture next week. Because it's a very powerful scripture. Hebrews 5. By the grace of God, I'll come and continue. I'll bring with the uh, last week one, that uh, because evangelist continued, Listen, or she, as she's listening, she can continue with this one. But when I come, I will elaborate on it by the grace of God. Because my time is up, and um, uh, this time I have exactly one hour. Before it was one and a half. <laughs> to God be the glory. Uh, I accept everything in good faith. Hallelujah. So, by the grace of God, next week I will come and continue. And then um, we will understand. I believe you are blessed. And you continue to be blessed. Anything I pronounce on you, so shall it be. So I pronounce blessings upon you. No devil can pronounce curses on you. It won't happen. By the grace of God. Because my words are very strong. I always say it. When I say you are blessed, you are blessed forever. So whoever is listening at this hour, you are blessed. In Jesus' mighty name. God bless you. Thank you all for watching and stay blessed in Jesus' mighty name.